Hello, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set a table and how to introduce the products to your guests. The tool you need to use during your party is the party planning guide that you will find on our resource center on our website. That uh, tool introduces the products and the way of uh, presenting them and testing them throughout the party. So we have different kinds of products that are set. You can uh, set them on the table in a different way. That the only thing you have to start with it with the salty side and then go to the sweet side at the end of the tasting. Remember that a party lasts between one hour, one hour and a half max. If you go beyond that time, people socialize too much and they forget the focus of the party, which is to taste and then to purchase. So you have the set of um, fruit natural syrup, the mustards, the different olive, the black olive spread, the fruit flavored vinegar, the sauces, the, the dressings, and the olive oil. And finally the chocolate. We'll finish with the chocolate. We'll go through the salty side and then we'll finish with the, the everything sweet. Uh, I like to start the tasting with the olives. We offer three different kinds of olives. Uh, the green that are called the Luc, they are very meaty and fresh when you eat them. Also, they are usually used for the vodka dirty martini. Uh, you pour a little bit of juice, the vodka, and then uh, three or four olives in, in, in the drink, and you have a, a great uh, cocktail. Then you have the, um, olive, the black olive oil curd uh, with herbs of Provence. Uh, those ones are kind of dry, uh, they're salty, uh, and also they are the number one product from all our range in terms of sales. This is the number one product. Uh, and then we have the Niçoise, which are really teeny and mostly used in France in stews. So first we open them. So we can pour them in a, in a dish. Some people put uh, toothpicks, you know, in, in, uh, in, in the, directly in a jar, but I like to pour them out. Here you have the black olive cured in olive oil and herbs of Provence. Here you have the green luc, which is the one that usually use in the vodka for the dirty martini. So you pour some, so your friends can try them. Don't be, try to be during the party very generous. In the food industry, people need to taste, people need to share. So it's very important to be generous with your friends. And then we have the real olive from Nice, the Niçoise. This olive in France is usually used in stews. Why? Because the flavor is very particular and also it's very tinny, very, very small. So it's not very easy to eat as a snack. So here you have three different kinds of olives that they can try. We offer three different kinds of sauces, the Béarnaise, the Hollandaise, and then the Mayonnaise. Um, those sauces are made from a cold emulsion and they're very creamy, creamy. The Béarnaise sauce, if you look at the back, under the, the jar, it's a little bit herby because it's made with tarragon. Hollandaise sauce is a little bit yellow because it's made with lemon. This one, when you try it, it's really fresh. It's give, giving, a, giving like a kick to your dish. And then the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise is creamier than whatever you can find here because there's more egg in the recipe. Those three sauces in France at home are used uh, mainly for seafood or fish, but here in the States, there's so many uses you, uh, for, uh, for those sauces. The first one, Hollandaise, you can use it or on asparagus or um, eggs benedict. So all those three sauces do not need to be refrigerated before it's opened. Once it's open, you can put it in the fridge. If it's in the fridge, you can keep them six months easy in the fridge. So those three sauces, the best way to use it is to use it with bread. You don't have to be 
very, very sophisticated to present our products. The best tool, the best um, way to use our products is bread. Make sure you make, you cut thin slices of bread because you don't want your guests to eat. You want them to try, to taste. So what you do is you're, you know, right out of the jar, you show the product, and then the best way to do it is to take some, some sauces, pour it on top of a piece of bread, and then give it directly to your guest. Once you're done with your olives and then the sauces, you move forward to the salad dressing. The salad dressing, we have two kinds of salad dressing. The first one is the apple balsamic vinegar, and the other one is Dijon mustard. The beauty of those shakers is that it doesn't need to be refrigerated even once opened, meaning that you can take them to the office and you bring your container of green salad and at noon, whatever time you eat, you open your, your um, container, you shake the bottle and you pour as many as you want on top of your greens. So your salad is not, you know, mushy into the, the dressing for noon. This one for me is, the, is my favorite because it has some, uh, it's flavored with apple, but it's a little bit artichoke. It's really nice. This one is made out of sunflower oil, vinegar, sea salt, pepper, and also mustard, Dijon mustard. You pour it. This one is the real French. Every French use that must that vinaigrette. So what you have, you have can have your friends try the vinaigrettes with the bread, dip it in and, and then have it, try it. But also um, what would be nice if you have some leaves of salads, uh, different kinds of salads, greens, but also Belgium endive. And it's nice to, you know, to cook to scoop a little bit of um, vinaigrette and, and have it already. Because we tried the, the vinaigrettes, now we're gonna try the vinegars. I didn't wanna have you try the vinegars before the vinaigrettes because vinegars is more, is stronger, uh, more overwhelming. We have two kinds of fruit flavor vinegar. The first one is apple and then fig. Fig is the, usually the one that we sell the most it's stronger and it's sweeter. This is one recipe that I can give you and that I do personally once a week. If you have, for example, a pork chop, you grill it on the stove. When it's done, you put it on the plate and you cover it with another plate to keep it warm. And then you take, for example, the fig vinegar, you, you pour quite enough in the pan. You deglaze all the sea salt, the juices of the meat and the pepper. And then when it thickens a little bit, you pour it on the piece of uh, meat and you have a $60 piece of meat. It's fantastic. I do it once a week and it's really working. It takes only five minutes to do. Uh, you can do side dressings uh, in, in, uh, with, the, with the different olive oils. Uh, you can pour it on the fruit salad. When you do a fresh fruit salad, you pour a little bit of uh, fruit vinegar. It makes a liaison between the fruits and gives a kick. It's really nice and it colors a little bit the salad. I would like now to introduce you our olive oils. Uh, we have two kinds. The first one is a blend, meaning that it's a mix of different kinds of olives, different varieties. The quality of this olive oil is outstanding. Um, it's, it's great to use it as a dipping before dinner or an aperitif with the parmesan slices. Uh, the color is really, really nice and it's quite strong in terms of flavor. Here you pour a little bit and you make your guests try it as, as simple as that. So you have the olive oil here and people take a piece of bread, dip it in and, and try it that easy. Um, the olives that are produces that uh, olive oil are made from uh, the French Riviera but also the Languedoc Roussillon area. Uh, that olive oil is our number two best seller after the olives, the black olives. 
uh, why. We have many reasons to explain why. The first one is because of the label. The label is 75 years old. But also uh, the quality. The quality is astonishing by the freshness of the olive oil, the color, but also the taste that is really bold. And also the price. Why the price is $16.95 when Italians for the same quality and the same content offer the an oil an oil for uh three two to three dollars more. This one is a different kind of olive. It comes from the French Riviera from a village of four thousand people called Les Beaux de Provence. In that village everybody is uh dedicated to the olive producing. Um, the olive are made in the village, around the village, and everybody in the village works work for the production of that olive oil. It's a very exquisite olive oil. Why? Because uh, the process of production is quite uh, hard, strict. For example, once the olives are picked, they need to be processed within four days. Um, that olive oil, that product, that item, is the only one that is above $20. All the products we offer in our range, it's from $3.95 to $19.95. We have only one product that is more expensive than $20. This is the one. It's $27.95. Why? Because of the reason. It's very exquisite. So you do the same thing. You pour, you can have people smell. It's like a olive crush. This one is, is fantastic. You pour a little bit. And same process. People take a piece of bread and try it directly. This is the colors. So this one will be a little bit thicker in terms of consistency. Um, so this one, you can use it for salad dressing, uh, and you can cook with it. This one, according to me, would be a crime to cook with it. If you have fresh pasta, you pour some on it. If you have um, a white fish, that you, you can pour some on it. So it's, it's really good in the dipping. If you have some friends, you can have some dipping. It's really good. So those are our two olive oil. Once we're done with the salad dressing, the vinegars, the olive oils, we are going to try the mustards. The mustards are from the city of Dijon. Dijon is a city located two hours south of Paris, and it's huge in terms of production of mustard. Um, here we have two kinds of mustards. The mustard, the real one, from Dijon, meaning that it's the, what you can call the yellow one, um, that mustard is the most uh, used in France and I think elsewhere. The second one is the old fashioned from Dijon. The difference is this one has the seeds, the mustard seeds, and we can see it, you know, if you, if you move it like this, it's thicker and it's more vinegary, more vinegary. So the best way to have people try it is to put a spoon in the jar and again, people take some piece of um, bread and, and uh, spread it on. Now you can have, you know, like uh, cold beef or cold pork to have to try it. But again, let's try to be, to focus on the product and not to eat. You would have different kinds of parties to go towards the food. Different ideas with those two mustards. If let's say you have um, a thigh of chicken or um, some piece of turkey you would like to cook into the oven, you coat your piece of meat with the mustard, be generous around it, and then you slam it into the oven and it gives a, a kick to the meat and some flavor, a richer flavor. It's way better than to have it grilled. In, into the oven. Now let's try the black olive spread called tapenade. Tapenade is a recipe made out of black olives and olive oil and a little bit of anchovies and the recipe is from Nice, the city of Nice in the French Riviera. And if you had gone to the French Riviera you certainly if you had some uh, drink, some snack, I'm sure you had been offered some toast with tapenade or in the restaurant while waiting for your dish, 
Um, most of the, all the restaurants offer this, uh, the tapenade as a, as a snack. So the best way to use, to try that product would be, again, with a piece of bread. You take a piece of bread and you, you pour a little bit of tapenade on top of it and you have your friends try it. Now you can prepare that before they are over, but it would be nice to show them how to prepare. A tip that you would have to, to know also is it's better when the bread is toasted. Because we've tried all the different kinds of foods, now we are going to move forward and go to the drinks, the fruit drinks. We have 10, diff 10 different flavors of syrups. The fruit syrups in France is the number one non-alcoholic drink meaning that when the kids get off school, they go home and they have different kinds of flavors of, uh, of uh, syrups. Uh, my dad, for example, when he comes from work, I always seen him having a large glass of syrup uh, because it's made with uh, fruits and, and uh, sugar cane. It's very natural. Nobody cares how much or how many drinks you, you're gonna have. Every house in France has four flavors, an average of four flavors at home. And so you can tell the huge market of those syrups in France. If you go to bars, you ask for, you can ask for a syrup. They have different flavors, you can try them. Uh, people mix in France it with cold milk. Um, most of the time we drink it with water, but some people like it with milk. Uh, if we have some different kinds of alcohol, like let's say if you have a cheap white wine, yeah, well, you pick your, the fruit you prefer and you pour it to flavor it. It works with champagne, even though champagne is wonderful by itself, but might, some people might like it flavored. Um, with vodka, it works really well with vodka. You have, you know, a dry vodka and you pour some fruit flavor in it with um, some ice cubes and it changes the drink and you have some kind of cocktail. Now, at home in France, the, there's two flavors that are number one and forever. They have been number one forever. It's gonadine, which is a mixed berry, mixed berries, and also mint. Mint, because it's very fresh, very clean. Um, so what you do, you, you present the different uh, fruits, flavors, and uh, you open any kind of uh, uh, bottle. It's very, very strong in terms of uh, flavor. All the fruit used in, in those bottles uh, are produced in the Provence area, 50 miles around uh, the manufacturer. And if you go to our website at, at our Rousseau Center, um, you will have a video showing you how those syrups are made. So, again, super simple. You pour a little bit of syrup in a glass. You make the, the, the guest smell the fruit because it's very overwhelming and really true in terms of uh, being close to the real fruit. And then you pour some water couple of ice cubes that I don't have here, but a couple of ice cubes, and you drink it, and you have a natural fruit syrup. And for finishing the whole presentation, th those are the chocolates. We have a cocoa powder, cocoa powder that is unsweetened for baking, but one of the snacks that we do in France, and it's great for, I've been raised on that, and and many kids uh, have it still at home. It's a piece of bread, a little bit of butter, and then you're sparkling, you're sparkling the, the, the chocolate on top of the butter, and it's a snack, and uh, it's all natural, and it's uh, good for them. Uh, but this chocolate use is usually uh, for baking. And then we have the hearts. We have two kinds of hearts, the dark ones and the caramel ones. The dark ones are not uh, sweet. Those ones are sweet, and those are more for the kids. If you want a real milk chocolate, you take a mug of milk and you put it in the microwave or, or in the stove. When it's hot, you, 
you put the, sp the, the spoon, the wooden spoon, into the milk and you stir until you have uh, a real chocolate uh, milk. Now, the dark one will not melt easily fast because it's all chocolate, there's no sugar. So it won't melt like right away. If it melts right away, that means that it's, the sugar level is high. This one doesn't have any sugar, so it should be quite, you know, two minutes to, to melt. This one will melt faster. Now, some clients of ours, uh, they use those spoons to flavor the coffee. All our products are all natural, 100% natural meaning that they don't have any GMOs, no hormones, no bad preservatives, no antibiotics. Everything is all natural. All the ingredients are French and local to each manufacturer. And I would like to finish the party just telling you that all the dishes that I used during that party were, are, um, are provided by Revol. Revol is uh, China where manufacturer in France since 1789 and they are partners with us. You can see them on our website and it's the most beautiful China that we can have at home. So now that they are distributed in America, I thought that the partnership would be a good idea.